So the topic for today is sentences, subject and predicate. Every simple sentence can be divided into two parts, a subject and a predicate. So here we have the chicken laid an egg. That's the sentence. The chicken is the subject. This is the subject of the sentence. The subject is the main thing or person. And then here we have laid an egg. This is the predicate. The predicate is the rest of the sentence. It always contains a verb which tells us what is happening. What is the verb in this predicate? Laid, yeah? That is the action word. Okay, that's the verb. Um, what is the noun in the predicate? Right, egg, okay? The chicken is the first noun, that's the subject. And then the second noun is the egg. That's not the subject, okay? The subject is usually a noun or a proper noun, okay, if it's a name. Right, so laid is the verb and egg is the noun. What is an? Because we did this. An is the article. Laid is the verb and egg is the noun. These are the definitions of all the words here. And chicken is also uh, an, a noun. And the is what? The is also an article. The, an and a are the three articles. Just match these subjects and predicates to make simple sentences. Write the sentences. So here are the subjects and these are the predicates. Okay, I shall read the subjects first. The snake, a grey cat, bakers, comedians, Robin Hood, my pet dog, some fishing boats, the busy doctor. And now for the predicates. Bake bread, visited the sick child, chugged out of the harbour, hid in Sherwood Forest, slithered through the grass, jumped over the fence, tell jokes, was chewing a bone. Okay, let's begin. The snake, what does that match with? Good. Slithered through the grass. The snake slithered through the grass. What is the verb in that sentence? Or in the predicate? Slithered. Good. What is the other noun in the predicate? Grass. Good. Grass is the thing. Okay. Next. Number two. A grey cat. Good. Jumped over the fence. What is the verb in the predicate? Jumped. And what is the noun? Fence. Good. Fence is the noun. Bakers. Good. Bake bread. And what is the verb? Bake. And what is the noun? Bread. Good. Comedians. Tell jokes. What is the verb? Tell. And what is the noun or nouns? Jokes. Yeah. That's the thing. It's called uh, jokes, uh, like ideas, are called abstract nouns because they are nouns you can't touch and hold. The fence you can touch, grass you can touch, bread you can touch and hold and smell and see, but jokes you can't. Okay, so it's an abstract noun, but it's still a noun because you can put the word the, you can put an article in front of it. That's how you know it's a noun. The jokes. Right, number five, Robin Hood. That's right, Robin Hood hid in Sherwood Forest. Some of you might not know this, but Sherwood Forest is where Robin Hood uh, came from. Yeah, that's where he lived in the stories of Robin Hood. Okay, what is the verb? Hid. Good. Now, this is not a noun. It is a proper noun. Okay? Sherwood Forest is a proper noun because it's a name. It's a, the name of a place. Okay? And that's why it has capital letters. Okay? So I suppose it is a, is a noun, but it's a special noun. It's a proper noun. Right. My pet dog... Good. Was chewing a bone. What's the verb? Or the main verb? Chewing is the main verb. Technically, was is also a verb, but that's what we call a being verb, so I wouldn't worry about that too much just yet. Chewing. What is the noun? Bone, yeah. And here we have the article, so we can tell this is the noun. The art uh, article always comes before the noun. Right, number seven. Some fishing boats. Good. Chugged out of the harbour. What is the verb? Chugged. Yeah, you can tell because it's got ed on the end. Um, uh, lots of regular verbs have ed on the end. Now, chugged is how a boat moves. It kind of, particularly these smaller boats, they jitter like this. They don't move smoothly. They, when the motor's going, they shake a bit and they move slowly. Okay, because they're just starting out from the harbour. Good. Uh, what's the noun in chugged out of the harbour? Harbour, yeah, because here we have the art article. And that's always before the noun. The busy doctor... Right, so in this predicate, what is the verb? Visited, and what is the noun? Child, good, that's the thing, that's the object. Okay, making sure, copy these sentences, in each one, circle the subject and underline the predicate. So, um, A, my youngest brother eats a lot of pizzas. My youngest brother is the subject, has a circle around it, and the predicate is eats a lot of pizzas, okay? 
And that's why we've underlined this one. OK, now you'll see a pattern emerge. The big black crow flew into the clear blue sky. What is the subject? Right, good. Now, what's the predicate? Good. OK, so you notice, in general, in sentences, the subject comes first and the predicate follows. OK, C. A fierce wild dog snarled at the frightened boy. What is the subject? Good. And the predicate? Good. D. Three strong men pushed the car back onto the road. What is the subject? Three strong men. And what is the predicate? Push the car back onto the road. Good. E. Some straggly sheep were grazing in the field. What is the subject? Some straggly sheep. Good. And what is the predicate? Were grazing in the field. Good. F. Kieran and Jayesh ran into the cave as fast as they could. What is the subject? Or subjects? Kieran and Jayesh. Okay. And what is the predicate? Yeah. Good. They ran into the cave as fast as they could. G. The new dentist inspected my teeth. What is the subject? The new dentist. And the predicate is inspected my teeth. Good. H. The teacher in the playground blew the whistle. What is the subject? The teacher. Okay. And the predicate is in the playground blew the whistle. Okay. Uh, I. A small fishing boat was battered by the huge waves. What is the subject? Good, a small fishing boat. And the predicate is, was battered by the huge waves. Good, J. The metal robot moved with strange clanking sounds. So what's the subject? The metal robot, good. And the predicate moved with strange clanking sounds. Good. Okay, so that wasn't too difficult. Now, the second part is we have to tick the verbs in the sentences you have written. So, A, my youngest brother eats a lot of pizzas. What is the verb? Eats. B, the big black crow flew into the clear blue sky. What is the verb? Flew. C, a fierce wild dog snarled at the frightened boy. What is the verb? Snarled. Uh, D, three strong men pushed the car back onto the road. What is the verb? Pushed. Good. E, some straggly sheep were grazing in the field. What's the verb? Grazing, which um, means what? What does grazing mean? Eating grass, yeah. Uh, Kieran and Jayesh ran into the cave as fast as they could. What is the verb? Ran. The new dentist inspected my teeth. What is the verb? Inspected. The teacher in the playground blew the whistle. Uh, what is the verb? Blew. A small fishing boat was battered by the huge waves. What is the verb? Yeah. We're looking at the action verb, not the being verb. Um, the metal robot moved with strange clanking sounds. What's the verb? Moved. There we go. And that's how it should look. Uh, and you notice, of course, all the verbs are in the predicates. Right. Punctuate these sentences correctly. Now, we won't go into too much detail because I think you all know that, at, well, should all know that at the start of a sentence, you have a capital letter. And then at the end of a sentence, you have a full stop. OK. Don't forget that when you do your writing. But on top of that, what else has capital letters in sentences? Uh, not only do you have capital letters at the start of a sentence, but also in proper nouns. OK, proper nouns include names. They could be names of towns, cities, your name, um, places. OK, and um, then also uh, days of the week and months of the year. OK, the hungry tiger pounced on Sarah. So we know there needs to be capital letter at the start and full stop at the end. What else has a capital letter? Sarah, OK. OK, so, yeah, and here we see Sarah now has a capital letter, which is the correct way of doing it. The guide uh, dog found the injured explorer on top of the icy mountain. Well, there's no names, there's no proper nouns in that, so we just changed the T to a capital and put a full stop at the end. The police officer chased the young burglar. So again, there are no proper nouns, so we changed the T to a capital and full stop. A red sports car crashed into the back of the coach. Again, no uh, proper nouns, so just at the start of the sentence and then a full stop at the end. The dragon ate Prince Rupert for breakfast. Now here we do have a proper noun, that's Prince Rupert. And in that we include Prince, okay, Prince Rupert. And here the wise old wizard turned Tess into a toad. Tess is a name, so it has a capital letter. Now, the hungry tiger pounced on Sarah. So for this task, we have to change the subject with the other noun or proper noun. So instead of the hungry tiger pounced on Sarah, what do we write? On the hungry tiger. Good. Sarah pounced on the hungry tiger. So it makes a 
funny sentence. Yeah? So we're swapping around the subject with the object. The guide dog found the injured explorer on top of the icy mountain. So what you need to do is you need to look for the nouns. In some cases, the proper, proper nouns, but in this case, there are two nouns. So we have the dog, the guide dog, and then we have the injured explorer. So we need to swap those. They're the main characters in this. So what do we get if we swap those around? The injured explorer found the guide dog on top of the icy mountain. Okay. The police officer chased the young burglar. So who are the two characters in this? Who are the two nouns? Yeah, so... We need to swap the young burglar with the police officer. So what does that give us? Good. Yeah, so it's important to also know what the verb is because the verb remains fixed in the middle, but the subject and the, op and the object swap. A red sports car crashed into the back of the coach. Well, let's first look at what the two uh, nouns are in this. What are the two nouns? Uh, yeah, so you've got the coach and the red sports car. So you need to swap them around. The coach crashed into the back of, the, of a red sports car. The dragon ate Prince Rupert for breakfast. Okay. Right. Prince Rupert ate the dragon for breakfast. Yeah. So we swap Prince Rupert and the dragon around. The wise old wizard turned Tess into a toad. Good. So Tess turned the wise old wizard into a toad. Okay, so that's what you have to do for the English. 